Hey Sagittarians, this is your singles love reading for March 2017. Let's go ahead and get started. This position is the present position, present expectations, the unexpected, immediate future, long-term future, and then I have a clarifying card for each of the decks I used that helps me to clarify if I used this deck, then it's going to go for those particular cards from that deck, and so on, okay? So let's go ahead and start with the present position. First out is Eight of Wands. I believe this is you, being that you're a fire sign, or it might be somebody that you've been involved with before. And since this is a singles reading, it could be somebody you're currently with. I know it's not supposed to be, but I did get a lot of uh, relationship vibes going on here. So I think single could just be not married. Um, but this is the Queen of Wands. She, she needs to feel special, but she can't be trapped. They're very truthful, um, faithful, loyal, warm. They just bring life to everybody. But they may be, if this is, this is either you or your love interest, okay? Um, one of you may be a little out of touch with what's going on. They don't see something. But this person's very trusting, very truthful, very submissive. They're not suspicious at all. This also says this person has plenty of admirers. They have um, open options. So this could be you and your love interest. One of you, I'm thinking you're the one that has uh, options. And they are kind of a little blissfully unaware. But you basically, you want to be adored. Um, Either, you know, you're really popular and nobody can take their eyes off you, or this is your love interest, and you just can't take your eyes off of them. But somebody self-assured, they've, you know, seen an objective view of their past. Because you notice the past is not in here, okay? <laughs> so they've had an object objective view of their past. Like, yeah, these trials, you know, just made me more complete as a person. Okay, so they're very um, objective about it. Um, but... With the Queen of Swords in the reading, which is the same deck, having two queens talks about you have a friend that's influenced by you in some way, and they're spreading the word about something. Whether you've influenced over good or bad, I, I couldn't really say. Um, but Queen of Swords, you know, she uh, she doesn't mince words, okay? So if she knows something about you, um, she's spreading the word. She's not really a gossip, but she does... See, Queen of Swords can also talk about secret love. So this might be your secret love. Uh, Queen of Swords is also perceptive. Um, she's independent. Mm -hmm. So is this one. She's independent too. Alright, but um, they have the Eight of Swords right next to it in the same present position. So it makes me think somebody is like hot and cold. Hot passion, cold thoughts. Somebody may not stimulate you. And Queen of Swords needs mental stimulation. Okay. Um, or just maybe you're not sure of your feelings. Like sometimes you feel like you want one way and the other times you don't. This could be about an ex. Um, even a current partner. This turns more and more into not a singles reading, but um, or it could just be somebody that you're on and off again with, or even within this, within a marriage. Because so here I see, you know, engaged, detached. Now when I say in a marriage, I think it's funny that one of the clarifying cards was engagement in reverse. And I used engaged, so actually that's kind of funny, I didn't even think about that. So your relationship's not ascending to a higher level. 
So maybe some of you were engaged and it broke off. Or it just means you're not engaged, but you're with somebody. And again, remember, if you're engaged, you're still single. <laughs> uh, you are not married. Um, some of you, you just broke off an engagement, but you're still in a relationship. Or you just, you've never been engaged, you're still single. Okay. But some of you may have broken off with somebody in the past. And that could be the engaged and then detached. Maybe the ex is the one that you broke off an engagement with, so they're like an ex-fiancé or whatever, whoever that is. I guess it's male and female. Um, bring out that queen of swords. Let me think about that for a second. So we have two swords that could clarify. Eight of swords talks about trusting. So again, this person is trusting. But they're really like, like a victim. And you probably felt, knowing Sages, you probably felt a little trapped. And then again, as this being part of you and part of somebody else, you have to, you can't feel trapped. You have to feel special, but not trapped. And then we have feeling trapped. So somebody is a little too clingy and you're like, I have to disengage from you. <laughs> I can't be with you. You, you are uh, way up in my nose or something, you know, <laughs> I couldn't think of it. I didn't want to say, but, but I guess I will. Um, This also talks about breakup, Eight of Swords. So you broke up with somebody, yeah. Disengaged from them. They were limiting your power. Um, I mean, yeah, it could be commitment phobe. You were a commitment phobe. But then again, remember, this could be another person and you. So maybe the person you were with was commitment phobic, phobic and they broke off an engagement with you. So whenever I say something, apply it to the person it applies to. Don't just assume that I got it wrong, you know who it applies to more than I would. But, you know, after this Eight of Swords, you know, the Eight of Swords is blindfolded in the other picture. She doesn't really know what to expect. And we have Nine of Pentacles in reverse, which means, you know, you were wanting to settle down. And it's in reverse, so it, it, it didn't happen with the Eight of Swords, too. Like you had some kind of a setback or a loss. And it was probably due to some kind of foolish decision, whether it was theirs or yours. And basically kind of just sacrificed love for whatever reason. You, oh yeah, with this in reverse, it was a toxic relationship. Mm hmm You felt like a prisoner in your own house with this Nine of Pentacles in reverse. Mm-mm-mm. Maybe they wanted to settle down and you didn't. Or you wanted to settle down and you realized, oh, I can't. Uh, this person's going to be on me all day, every day. And I think one of you needed the other to be self-sufficient because this is the opposite of self-sufficient. Because here, Eight of Swords, somebody's a victim, so they just feel like they can't take care of themselves. Yeah, and just somebody wasn't ready to have those kind of feelings towards somebody. They weren't ready to get engaged, and they chose not to. This is actually this is present, so I'm saying it in the past, but it's probably happening right now as we speak, or it was like a week ago or something. It's really soon. Um, but yeah, just overall failure, disappointed expectations. But now you have the freedom to be yourself. And so does the other person. We just, this is somebody who's separated, unhappy, um, not necessarily unhappy. But there's a little bit of sorrow, I guess I could say. Maybe a little embarrassed. Maybe the engagement was very public. And being threatened by your intimate feelings. Again, a little bit commitment phobic. And now there's an absence. You're kind of lonely. And again, you know, we have that secret love, which may be important later on. But I mean, she's direct and she's honest. She's very perceptive. A 
for some of you, the broken engagement could be a symbol of like a being a widow or widower, because she reminds me of that. I mean, this is a divorced person. This person is not married or they've been separated um, permanently um, in this life. Because Eight of Swords can mean fatality, but it's usually in reverse when that's the case. But, you know, it does talk about like a breakup of some kind, bad news and mistrusting and the need to be objective. And this person is objective, um, at least in some ways. Other ways, she's a little naive. <laughs> it, it depends on what person you're talking about. All right, so moving on to the present expectations. First is Ace of Swords. So it may have been that somebody's like, yay, victory. <laughs> um, but that's not exactly how it works out. With Ace of Swords and the Eight of Swords recently. Yeah, let's get back over there. Um, this tells me that changed your mind. Okay, you felt trapped, changed your mind. Like, nope, no engagement, no relationship. Also, later on, we have the Three of Swords. Yeah, sorry about it. You probably already saw it. It talks about a fear of being hurt. Also, possibly, um, there was some kind of criticism and you just couldn't deal with it. Like, remember, this person can be a little blunt. Okay. Probably an air sign. Because okay. we do have lots of swords here. Um, so they were just a little bit blunt and you couldn't handle it. As far as criticism goes. And you or the other person or both needed to use kind words because you probably weren't very nice to each other. And there's just like this hurt mental state going on. Put that back where that goes. But later on you have the Three of Cups. And it talks about an end to a severe situation. So yeah, this relationship was very toxic. I don't see abuse, but I do see toxic. So this is good news. You know, you're getting away from this person. You can kind of see clearly now, like you see the truth. There is some failure to communicate, but it's the right decision. And it kind of looks like no matter what happens, you win and the other person wins too. Because somebody's a dictator in this relationship and the other person's just like done. They're so frustrated with it. Um, and again, the other lover is like a little blunt, possibly selfish, controlling. Mm. Mm. But this also talks about an upcoming disaster that can be prevented. Okay, and it seems as if the prevented um, could be, you know, the breaking up. Let's see, also with the Ace of Swords. I think I'm missing something here. All right, it's, yeah, it's next to the Seven of Cups. I was wondering what that was. I was thinking that was the Eight of Cups for some reason. <laughs> okay, Seven of Cups. Uh, you know, it says, you know, you expect some bumps. Okay, but you're going to have to be objective. Be honest about your intent. Because you've recently decided this, but I don't know if you've told them. Because remember, they're a little bit blindfolded by this Eight of Swords. Um, if you're pursuing somebody, they're not exactly what they seem. Okay. And the partner is emotionally unavailable. But because you have the Ace of Swords with the Seven of Cups, it says this change that's coming with this, it should be a disaster, right? But it's one that could be prevented or avoided. And it says the change is going to be for the better. So you may just avoid a disaster overall by making this change. And you know what change I'm talking about because it's, you've been thinking about it. Um... Yeah, the decision you make leads to good results, and like the odds are in your favor. You win against the odds. So here's somebody who has lots of options. And again, this person has lots of options as far as you know romance. They have lots of admirers. So the person you're pursuing, or the person you were in a relationship with, or you're thinking of breaking up with, 
they may have lots of options. And you're trying to avoid some disaster like um, infidelity. Others of you, you may have lots of options again. And you want to avoid some heartbreak by disengaging from the relationship in whatever means possible. Maybe a divorce. All right, clarifying that, we got make the effort and reverse. <laughs> this is to say, you know, don't make the effort to make this work. Okay. Because if you try to make it work, it's not going to be the Ace of Swords as a victory. It's going to be it as a disaster. And, you know, clarifying all these romance cards is let go of control issues. So you can't control um, if somebody breaks an engagement or breaks up with you. You can't control um, if they're making a change. You know, don't make the effort. Don't try to control the issue. That's making a big effort. Um, I would think, um, well, we do have the High Priestess coming up, so I'll just go ahead and mention her. She's the next card. This says, you know, allow events to unfold without interceding. Like, have your inner peace, your balance. And also, you know, we have the temperance later, so I see a lot of balance. And that's your card, okay? So you're supposed to be balanced. You know, this talks about a beginning and an end. Okay, so something's definitely ending. Also, we have two choices. Okay. I see somebody in, throughout this reading that has another option as far as romance goes. They're like, uh, you or someone else is very charismatic and it's easy for you to control people. Not in a bad way. It's just controlling. It says, you know, you have to trust your gut. Um, maybe you fell in love with somebody a little bit mysterious or under mysterious circumstances and there's some passion there. So, you know, we could have, you know, passion and engagement as in you feel passionate for this person but detached from the person that you were with or you've been with. And your life's just a little unstable because you're caught between these two things. They're holding up, but I mean, being in there, if there was a storm, something that's going to rock the boat, you know, those are going to fall on you. But you're going to have to work to get your goal. Um... And the work is like inner work, inner peace, okay? Uh, you have to kind of take a step back. Don't doubt yourself. If you think somebody's in a third party, go with your intuition, okay? You knew it. This is what that talks about, you knew it. Avoid believing what you're told. For those of you who you have the other person in your life, it says you're keeping it a secret. And then again, you know, for those of you who believe or you suspect, that the other person's holding a secret and use your intuition, okay? Because hey priestess here. Uh, maybe some of you work um, in like the occult and that's how you're kind of knowing that somebody's unfaithful or how somebody knows you're unfaithful. Uh, we have it next to the Three of Cups. This usually means, ooh, good time, celebration, but in this particular reading, it's gonna be infidelity of some sort, okay? For those of you who have nobody in your life, um, you may meet somebody at a party or a gathering. Um, some of you, you may have met up again with somebody you knew um, at a party. Maybe you actually literally hooked up at the party. Um, but this third person over here is being kept a secret. She's being hidden away. Um, Some of you, if you're just talking to an ex and you know you have, um, like they're your ex-fiance or something, you're still trying to be friendly. Like you're still trying to be in a group as friends and kind of celebrating and getting together. But you may not talk a lot when you're not in this group. Or you may be trying to just act like everything's fine, but really, you know, there's something wrong. There's like a secret. Like there's no closure or something. 
Yeah, somebody's just trying to pretend like everything's casual. Um, and you're just trying to reestablish some trust uh, for either love or friendship. So if an ex came back to you um, and they had cheated on you, and you knew about it, you had a hunch, you may be trying to reestablish some trust, but they're not really like digging into the matter. And so you're kind of like, well, why aren't they digging into it? You know, it's a little shady. There also, some people just have unexplained um, like cutting of contact. I don't see the Four of Swords in here. Um, but it, I mean, it could be just somebody stops contacting you. That's just um, a supposition. I don't see that in a lot of cards, just one. Sometimes this talks about, you know, I know the truth, but we're just going to, you know, we both know it's a dance, but we're not going to talk about it. We're just putting on a pony show. Clarifying that, we have Release Your Ex. So for some of you out there who are supposed to be single and you're not because of this reading, um, you may have been having um, an affair with an ex or your partner may be having an affair with their ex. Or maybe this ex is just like a third party in your mind. For those of you who are single, like the reading says you're supposed to be, uh, you could have met an ex at a party again, and there's just like this secret. Like You know what they did in the past. You can't prove that they cheated on you, but you know. And this just says, you know, release them, because you're, you're holding on to them. That's the unexpected, like... Unexpected is you find out they're cheating and you both pretend like you don't know. Or you found out they did cheat and you pretend like you don't know. But something happens at a gathering, I'm, ass I'm assuming. Because it's the only place I actually see in here. And see, that's... This Queen of Swords is supposed to be clarifying the High Priestess. I mean, she... The only thing she keeps secret is love. So again, I, I think secret love. Like otherwise, she's just like, bam, here it is. Okay, so maybe they're afraid of separation. Like they're scared of intimate feelings. And it talks about separation, so they're scared of it. So they keep it love a secret. And this love that they have may be for an ex. Or love that you have is for an ex. I'm not surprised. Almost everybody's in love with an ex somehow or another. And it's very sad, but... You know, what are you going to do? All right, next is the immediate future. I feel like I'm just... Oh, okay, those cards are over here. Okay, so first we have strength. Another fire sign. I think it's funny, there's two fire signs before we ever get to your card. Maybe you were in some kind of a love triangle with two other fire signs. Hmm. I think the high priestess is anybody. If that is, I sure don't know who that is. Probably is. <laughs> Alright, um, but we have Leo, and then we have, you know, infinite possibilities. Something going on and on. And this is like a lustful card. So there is somebody you have a lot of lust with. But he says, you know, think beyond the primal. Sorry if I hit the computer. You just kind of have to accept somebody for who they are. You know, they may be your rock. But if they're not good for you, they're not. You don't need to let go. See, here it says let go and let God. But a lot of these other cards are saying let go. Because you're going to master your circumstances. I mean, you're going to have to challenge yourself to do something here. Like you're going to have to achieve balance. Self-mastery. Because we do have temperance here again. So this is... We have two balance cards. Oh, no, we have three. But 
but just be fearless, be confident. Like, go, get your power back. So we have confidence here, confidence here. It's probably somewhere elsewhere, but. Um, okay, now with strength and the three of cups. Okay. This tells me like somebody's the heart of the group. They're the rock of whatever this is, okay? And it's clarified by the four of pentacles. Now, I wasn't expecting to see that. Um, but this usually tells me like holding on, being greedy, obsessive, also just kind of being alone, like a loner with whatever it is you're holding on to. So this tells me like you have a, a private grudge or like a chip on your shoulder that nobody knows about. And you're going to be strong to carry it. You know, there's some kind of weight on you. Um, you feel like maybe your, your difficulties are going to get the best of you. But basically, I see clinging on to an outgrown relationship. Like one or both parties did. Or they will in the immediate future. Okay, so you guys maybe are deciding whether or not to break up. You're like, I need to release my ex. This can also talk about um, with, the, with temperance. You might miss out by holding on to someone. Whether that's your current relationship, marriage, whatever it might be, or the ex. Like you're going to miss something by holding out for this person or by holding on to them. Also, we have like, you know, my good self um, is helping me tame my bad self. So some of you may be out there like, oh, I really want this other option. You know, grass is greener, um, but your good side's taming your bad side. And also here, you're just trying to prevent a loss of something. It could be monetary, um, just a loss of a relationship. Like you're holding on tight like a, like a miser. And you just, you can't seem to override the influence that this other person might have. Or like over you, or they might have over your partner, depending on what position you're in. And it says, whatever happens, the high priestess is saying, don't follow that urgency that you may be feeling. Okay, just take a step back, get some perspective, let things unfold naturally. Okay. Um, here, with High Priestess and Three of Cups, somebody may insist that something's one way and you know it's not. Like, this says, you know, don't believe what you're told. And you're not. You, you're trusting your hunch. Like, oh, it's this way. You know, we're just friends. And like, no. No, motherfucker. I know. <laughs> um, but you, you could feel like you're being manipulated by somebody. You don't have the exact truth. You have a hunch. But they're, maybe they're trying to come back. They're saying, well, you know, I didn't really cheat on you, baby. She's just a friend, you know. And then... <laughs> You're like, no, I have a knowing. I, I consulted a psychic or something, and I know. I just confirmed my hunches. And so if you feel manipulated by somebody, that's reason enough to just let them go. Okay, so over here with strength and four pentacles. Um, and you see you're holding on tight, preventing a loss. And the reason is because you need to love yourself first. A lot of people are getting this card lately. You're holding on to something you've outgrown with a person who who's lying to you. And it's because you're settling, like you don't know your own worth. Love yourself, okay? That's gonna fix the problem. And this is in your immediate future. So you're still gonna be holding on for a little bit. Whether or not you're in a relationship or not, it doesn't, I guess it doesn't really matter anymore. And again, I think it's funny we have holding on that says, you know, let go. You can't control it. So High Priestess, Strength, Four of Pentacles. This card, just let go. I know that's easier said than done, honestly. I understand. But in your long-term future, Three of Swords. Okay? Um, you know, just talking about 
all that real quick. The Nine of Pentacles, because Nine of Pentacles is supposed to um, clarify this card. Like you're holding on real tight to all your possessions, being very possessive, um, being... Like you think this is your stability. So you're trying to control things, but you're also like staying to yourself. Maybe being loyal to an idea, like I need to be with this person because we're married, even though you've kind of outgrown it, it's not really useful anymore. Um, yeah, you fear loss, so you're clinging on. Like you know, <laughs> and you know, the, uh, the reverse of this says let go of fear. So I think that's almost your advice too. To get rid of this, you gotta do the opposite. Let go of your fear. Like, let that sucker go. <laughs> All right, but with Nine of Pentacles and Four of Pentacles, I see, like, you've got to the point in the immediate future where you can no longer live with it. Like, you are at your limit, and you can't keep up. You just can't keep up with this facade anymore. So you may expose the truth, like, yeah, I, I know you're a cheating bastard, and I'm letting you go. That's why you broke off the engagement with me, you know, here recently. Okay, but Three of Swords... Back to that. I mean, we have heartbreaks, suffering. We have two breakup cards, Eight of Swords and Three of Swords. So, oof, lots of stuff going on there. Um, but then again, you know, it talks about fear of being hurt. This is in both in the present and in the long-term future. You end up being hurt um, if you don't let this person go. With the Seven of Cups and Eight of Swords, just thinking about that, this means you're easily being led um, to do something you don't want to do. Whether it's marriage, um, believing the lies they tell you about infidelity. Maybe they're like, well, I don't really want to get married. Um, we have all these other options we could do. And you're being led into being like, yeah, okay, I don't want to get married. Let's break off our engagement. With Three of Swords and Temperance clarifying it, I see that somebody's getting divorced. Also, somebody's really denying themselves something. Like, and again here, you know, my good self is hindering my bad self. And you really want that bad self to come out. <laughs> uh, and then we have, you know, love yourself. You know, if this is um, denying yourself, well, here, you know, you're denying yourself love by holding on to this relationship, by holding on to something. And you're going to deal with any kind of like, hostility. You're going to deal with it in a balanced way. And, you, and again, with strength, you're, you're holding on to this relationship. Like, you're making it into a third party. If this other person has already joined with their other person, you need to let them go. And again, we, you know, we have an, um, a known secret. Sometimes this means, you know, you get divorced, and then almost immediately you fall in love with somebody else. Um, you try to rationalize it. And you're like, well, I need to reconcile with my partner because that's the appropriate thing to do for whatever reason. And then you stay with your spouse. Some of you, you just get divorced or you break up from this engagement and you immediately find somebody else. And maybe it heals you from this heartache. But this talks about a slow healing. But this is also forgiveness. So like a slow forgiveness that leads to healing. But I see this as like the doctor. Like there's supposed to be, well, she's missing almost everything from the other temperance. See, I hate this deck. All right, so the other temperance has a triangle on her chest and she has some fucky medoodle on her head. I don't know what it is. And it represents a doctor. It's talk about healing and self-healing, inner peace. So you're gonna heal from this in the long-term future. Because even if you never found out, it happened and you know about it. And so you're going to heal from it when it comes to love. Maybe slow, but maybe not. 
And that's why, you know, you had a hunch because with this Eight of Swords, like you knew something sneaky was going on and maybe you broke off the engagement. But you, you just weren't communicating, like they weren't answering your phone calls and you're like, it's three o'clock in the morning, where are you? Um, so, but again, let, let go of control issues, separate, get divorced, um, be a single woman um, who wants to settle down, but just not with, not with your ex or who's gonna, somebody's gonna be your ex-husband. Because you deserve love, okay? If somebody's cheating on you, you deserve love. All right, Sagittarians, I hope you enjoyed your reading. This is supposed to be for singles, March love reading, but I'm gonna put singles-ish because some of you are all over the place out here. All right, be happy.